The AMD Ryzen 7000 series is arguably the best value for money in terms of CPUs right now, but it's not so simple to actually extract that value for money out of it. And you have to build your PC in a very careful and specific way in order to really make use of it. So today we're gonna discuss what components or better what specifics you should really be aiming for and especially what GPU should you be pairing with it. Let's get straight into it. Now the reason why initially Ryzen 7000 wasn't really as well accepted by the critic when it launched were mainly two factors. The motherboards were way too expensive. Even nowadays the X670E AM5 boards, because yes AMD switched to the AM5 socket, were really expensive. But with the launch of the new B660 it is finally becoming affordable. The second thing is that DDR5 prices were absolutely insane. Whereas now you can get a 32GB kit of quality DDR5 RAM for just 150 euros and you can even get high performance RAM for cheap which is what we have here today. Now the RAM that we have here today is this one with this very specific packaging with the anime girl which looks very nice and it was sent to us by XPG and we actually have a specific video on the channel discussing if you should get high speed RAM or not but my suggestion for today is to try and get 6000 MHz RAM, like the one we have here today, for around 130 to 150 dollars. Get the RGB one, gives extra FPS as well. So that's it for the RAM. Now another important aspect of PC building is what kind of cooler are you gonna choose? Now in this case we have the Mars Gaming ML360 Ultra paired with the case, the MC Ultra from Mars Gaming and we will go over those in a second but first of all I want to say that if you're really on a tight budget and let's say you're going for the Ryzen 5 7600X standard edition then you might want to go air cooled and now actually on the channel still we have a video in which I tested the 16 core Ryzen 9 7950X with an air cooler with a silence air cooler and that one worked just fine so you don't need a expensive and quality all-in-one cooler but if you do get it you will get the most out of it performance wise and more importantly noise wise this thing runs really quiet so let's see what we have chosen for the build here today now the motherboard is just your standard b660 from gigabyte so it's a relatively cheap board but it still has like wi-fi 6 DDR5 support, PCIe Gen 5 support, etc. Then we got, of course, the XPG uh, DDR5 6000 MHz RAM, RGB, which is, again, very good RAM. Then we got this case, new case from Mars Gaming. This is a very big case. Now, why is it important to get a big case? Because GPUs are getting huge, guys. Really, like maybe in the reviews you don't quite see, like, just how big they are but like an RTX 4090 is massive and older cases the one that were well developed before 2022 and 2023 weren't really able to accommodate for those big graphic cards especially because the trend in the industry was to make smaller case and if you've seen the channel a bit you know I've had a couple of issues with fitting GPUs in small cases so getting a big case is a good investment and this one supports three slots graphic card even vertical mounted plus as you can see the radiator support is very good it supports it both on the side and on top so you can do some exotic cooling if you want to go water cooled and again the RGB gives extra FPS and it's all white matching to the only one talking of which that as well was a very good product with those RGB tubes I honestly haven't seen those anywhere else and I think it does look very nice but again it is a bit overkill but it will help with the final benchmarks because we will do a bit of tuning afterwards and of course on the channel you will find an undervolted tutorial in case you want to increase the performance but this only one really does help with it. Now power supply. The whole Ryzen 7000 series is not power hungry at all okay here we have a Corsair 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply that's more than plenty you can pair it even with an RTX 4080 and be perfectly fine actually you can even put an RTX 4090 because the 4090 itself doesn't draw that much power and it's just that Nvidia changed the way they measure TDP so you can actually just use a 750 watt quality power supply for pretty much everything you need to so that one would be plenty so now the only thing that's left to talk about because of course for the storage you should get a single one terabyte 
Gen 4 NVMe drive that's the best choice is the graphic card. Now, as you can see, we don't have a graphic card here. You might be wondering why. Well, it's because the RTX 4070 that just released sucks. You shouldn't buy one. The reason why you shouldn't buy one is that there are much better options out there in the used market. Now, even if you, even if you want a new graphic card, you should still get a different card. And now we will discuss why. The RTX 4070 is way way less performing than the RTX 4070 Ti. Let's not get confused. The 4070 Ti is a high-end card. The 4070 is not. The difference between the RTX 4070 and the 4070 Ti is the same difference that in the previous gen was between the RTX 3070 and the RTX 3090. Or, to be more exact, the difference was the exact same of the one that was between the RTX 3080 and the RTX 3090 Ti because a 4070 goes exactly the same as a 3080 whereas a 4070 Ti goes exactly the same as a 3090 so they are the same cards as previous gen so with this kind of Ryzen you can play even at 300 Hz easily so can you put a 4070 Ti in there? yes so the first good pairing would be a 4070 Ti, but that's an $800 card, so it's an expensive card. If you want to go the high-end, 4070 Ti is the best choice you can make, and I do recommend it. But if you want to go with something in the price range of like five to 600 euros, there are much better options, and they are even better value than the 4070 Ti. And they are the RTX 3080, which can be had used easily for anywhere between 450 bucks all the way to 550 bucks without really looking too much for it. You can get a good custom, like a Strix top of the line triple fan card for like 600 euros, like right now here in Italy. So that's my recommendations. But for the sake of this video, I will try to get an actual better graphic card and I will try to get a fairly overlooked card, which is the RTX 3080 Ti. Now on the used market, the 3080 Ti costs much less than the 3090 because people think that it performs much less even though it's not true it goes the same as the 3090 it has half the vram with just 12 gigabytes but it performs much better than a 3080 so i will try to get one of these for like under 600 euros so i will go look for one used and then come back and mount it in this build and we will do some testing let's go okay so after giving a good look on the used market, I managed to get an RTX 3080 Ti Inno 3D black card, very bad looking but decently performing. For just 550 euros, I have secured the card. The guy's gonna bring it to me tomorrow, so that would be the best value for this build. But for aesthetic purposes, the configuration you see behind me is the highest end one with an RTX 4070 Ti Gigabyte Aero in white. The card cost me quite a bit around thousand euros for the aesthetic but really if you don't really want a white card to match the rest you can get it for much cheaper i think the market price now is around 800 euros for those 4070 ti's so you can get a one for fairly cheaper so to recap your range for gpus goes all the way from a 3070 ti i'd say well a 3070 if you're going to use a ryzen 5 7600 but really for ryzen 7 all the way for a 3070 ti uh, a founders for example that you can get for around 400 euros i have one in my main build right beside me uh, all the way to this card and of course with everything in the middle so i'd say you can aim for an rtx 3080 again in the range from 450 to 550 euros or a 3080 ti in the range from 550 to roughly 600 650 euros a 3090 around 700 euros right now give or take and even a 3090 ti which goes exactly the same as this one and you can pay around 800 for that it would have double the vram with 24 gigabytes of vram now vram is a big concern nowadays with people asking is 12 gigabytes enough and uh, again for higher resolution it probably won't be in the future so getting a 39 might be a better choice for that reason so you have to think about it but now let's discuss performance a little bit so what kind of performance can you expect with this build in this configuration right now with a 4070 ti well if you go and look on the channel uh, i actually did a build with a 4070 ti same custom as this one uh, with a ryzen 9 7950x and the performance is actually gonna be the exact same i tested it it's the exact same. So you can play at 1440p high refresh rate with all the most popular games, Apex Legends, Fortnite, Warzone. You can get 
again over the 200 fps mark with the right settings you can even lock in 240 with certain settings so very good performance 1080p you can get 300 hertz everywhere you can use those 360 hertz monitor easily with this kind of build and you can play AAA titles like cyberpunk like hogwarts legacy fairly easily without really compromising on settings if you're gonna use dlss 3.0 this card support you can go all the way up to 4k without any kind of issues for 60 fps and even a bit more so i'm very happy with it so to wrap this up i do think that those new ryzen's with the price cuts are a very good cpu to get and these are the gpus that i recommend to pair with them do let me know if you have built a ryzen system in the recent times what did you go with and also to conclude about this build specifically i'm very happy with the case the vertical mounts look really gorgeous i tested the temperatures it really wasn't too far off from being horizontal especially with those fans set as intake so we have two intake for outtake so i was very happy with that too the cooler works great we could actually do a bit of tuning on the cpu you will see that on the channel soon so stay tuned for that one too and again the whole build came out really nice i'm very happy again thanks to xpg for the ram the ram also very well performing and if you like this one please drop a like and a sub bye guys this mars gaming case has something pretty unique it has a solid dust filter so as you can see if we pull here the dust filter has plastic borders this is very useful because generally they are very easy to damage and pretty hard to take off and they tend to just go away on their own but look at how magnetic this one is pretty nice